Hey, I'm David Kempkin, uh, CEO, co-founder of Cola. Here's Brian Maji, uh, co-founder and head of marketing at Cola. I want to share what we're doing with a, a new kind of messaging app. If we're honest with ourselves, these devices aren't phones. That's kind of a quaint legacy term. What they really are is messaging devices. We spend all day in our messaging apps. It could be texting. It could be a lot of different things. Um, and there's a lot that goes on with messaging. Sometimes it's just chit chat. You know, hey, here's an emoji. Here's an animated gift, and so on and so forth. But around 30% of what goes on in uh, inside of uh, messaging is related to making a plan, making a decision. Like, where do you, where do you want to be? When do you want to be? Did you remember to do this thing? Where are you? And so on and so forth. And what's funny is the apps that are out there right now aren't really that good at that. And well, we've got an Indian problem. Okay. Um, okay. Nice. I want to give you a look at what we've got here. And unfortunately, we've got, we're losing a little bit of color, but hopefully you can get the sense of it. The app, by the way, this is an iPhone, iPhone app. It's in private beta right now. We're going to give you a URL just for attendees of this event to download it and install it on their phone. So hold on just a second here. I am launching the app here, and it's an iPhone messaging app. It's a pretty familiar looking interface. It's designed to look exactly that way. I'm going in here. I'm talking with Brian, and I'm going to say hello. And he's going to get that. And I'm just going to, I can't resist the presentation. I've got to try to fix that. No, I'm not. Okay, um, and he responded. You can see these things. These are like bubbles, right? These are speech bubbles. The key innovation in Cola is to add what we're calling interactive bubbles or Cola bubbles that look and act like a speech bubble, but they're basically like an app that lives inside the conversation. I can send it to another person. They can interact with it. I can see the reacting results in real time. So let's go to a scenario where we're saying, um, hey, you know, when can you meet? Let's start with that because I want to meet Brian for a cup of coffee. now. Two people on a texting thread, when can you meet? How many texts is that? 20? 50? Something like that. Three people on a texting thread, when can you meet? We're into triple digits. All right, so keep that in mind as you look at this. Right, so I'm going to do this, and here's the menu. These are the list of bubbles I can pop in there. All right, when can you meet? And it's going to show me these are the current contents of my calendar on my device. And I'm going to, I can look at that and I can say I'm free here and I'm free there, and I'm free there. I put out three times. Great. And I'm going to hit send. Bubble gets displayed. This is what I see on my phone on the right. Okay, and those are the times that I put out there. Now, if you look on Brian's phone, you can see the top one. Oh, he's got something going on. He's busy. All right? Mine says waiting responses. So Brian's going to tell me when is he actually available by tapping on the left. Okay, immediately I see that response. He's available on the second one. And I'm going to say, that's cool. Great, send final time. And he can add that to his calendar. And so I can add it to my calendar. How many text messages do we save? A few? We save a few text messages. Okay, that is an example of a polo bubble. I want to show you another one. So let's say we got, we're trying to decide uh, where to get a cup of coffee. Where are we getting a cup of coffee? All right, I'm going to send a little quick poll in coffee. Are we doing it at Starbucks? Uh, maybe we're going to Starbucks. Or maybe we're doing it at Pete's. Or maybe we're doing it at Phil's. What the hell is it going to send? Okay. I got a poll up there. No votes on each of them. Brian sees the same thing. He goes and he taps on whatever he would like to do. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm going to say, actually, I want to do it at Pete's. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Now, one final thing. Let's say time comes. Uh, we're waiting outside of Pete's. I'm waiting outside of Pete's. Brian's not there. When's he going to arrive? And you've probably hit, you know, hit on a texting message. Where are you now? Right? He's probably pretty familiar with that. Well, why don't I actually send a where are you now mobile? What this will do is it'll say, I'm going to send that location for 30 minutes. And it's going to come up and it's going to show my location and the location of everybody else in the thread. He just said, he accepted it. He said, all right, 30 minutes. And you can go full screen with it and so on. This, unlike a send a snapshot of my location, this remains live for the amount of time it was specified. So I can just watch his progress as he's coming over and so on and so forth. And there are more bubbles where that came from. There's a to-do list and send as a developer API. This is a key thing. Anybody who knows JavaScript can build Cola bubbles. And I'll talk a little bit about that in, uh, in a bit. But one question you might have with these apps, and hence with this sort of app is, how do I message someone who doesn't have the app? We've sorted that. This phone is using the default SMS client. And if I go back to this uh, coffee 
any poll right there, and Brian clicks on the coffee poll here, he gets a link. So remember, this phone does not have the Cola app installed on it. It could be any smartphone. He can place a vote there, and you will see that vote tallying in the middle phone. So you can just text anybody who has SMS capability with a with a browser, and that's about that's about the size of it. Key thing here is developer API. This is the first truly open messaging app. These bubbles are built on an open API. Over the next handful of months, you're going to see us talking more about that. Again, the app right now, private beta, but if you go to a URL we set up for this event, which is? So if you go to cola.io slash svnewtech, there's a sign up form, and uh, you'll be able to get access to the beta and try the app out and help you do. Thank you. It's an iPhone app, by the way. Yeah, it requires iOS 9 right now, and it runs on iPhone 5 or newer for now. And US, you need a US mobile number with a texting plan. Okay. What's the link again? It's cola, C-O-L-A dot I-O slash S-V new tech. And I recommend signing up using your phone. That'll make it quicker. It's the only way to really do it. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, questions? Yeah. Let's open up the questions. Well, you can text them to us, I guess. What's, a, what's your revenue model going to be? Revenue model is going to be it's going to be a freemium product. We're not going for an eyeballs or ad play. It'll be like a premium edition that has a construct of teams and a few other features that go along with that. Okay. Yes. Do you plan to have third-party integrations with your app? Right. So the way the question is third-party integrations for our app. These bubbles can call any third-party service. Right, so if you've got a, an API or an endpoint out there, they can call those services. We didn't show, these are all on device. We have others that do call external services. That's a pretty straightforward thing. Yes? Can I ask why you started with iOS? Um, we started with iOS, it's an interesting question. Um, I personally launched a lot of mobile apps, and what we see is that the people, at least, okay, who's running on Android here? Raise your hand, please. That, there's your answer. Okay, your answer is that the early adopters and the people who care about these things are running on iOS. There are more people on Android, but as far as getting early adoption, that's the track we're going. That's what, that's what I've seen in the market. And we will definitely be on Android in a period of time. If you're interested in, in uh, the Android beta when it's ready, you can go to cola.io slash Android and sign up and get notified when we're ready with that. Okay. Yeah. What's your intellectual property situation? Patents pending, patents acquired, how does right. that work out? Uh, we have a, what's it called? A, a provisional filing for essentially all the all the constructs that go into interactive bubbles within a conversation that can talk to each other. And so that we're now finalize, finalizing into a legit patent application. Cool. Yeah. That will be the most important thing to do. All right. Uh, I've got a question. Um, it looks like there's a consumer angle to this where people like the folks in the audience can download this uh, app and use it instead of the default iOS messaging app. However, it seems like you could probably do a B2B play here where you allow folks to use the technology and write label it as their own. So between those two kind of go-to-market strategies, are you, which one are you focusing on and uh, why? Okay, so Kind of a, you know, is this a B2B or is this a consumer play, right? So the, what we're looking at here is this is for, I'm going to call it productive, busy people. And those people tend to have jobs and they tend to have lives, uh, to the extent that it's possible with the job. So, um, you know, we kind of want to hit that group of people with this app and we want to get traction within that group of people. It's definitely not for teenagers, right? Once we're in that group of people, we're going to see opportunities that are related to business. But if we can get initial traction with just people using it in their everyday lives for really mainstream things and get people, you know, comfortable with the behavior, we feel like that's the that's the key thing. It's kind of a consumerization of that enterprise kind of play. Yeah, sure. Brian's been talking about the uh, the ideification of consumers. Actually, mm -hmm. we're kind of doing it. Yeah, kind of do the reverse. So. Very cool. Yes. We know WhatsApp is planning to do integrations, WeChat, and Line. And Yes, messenger products have done that already. Um, not to the extent like you're focusing on very common kind of minimal viable experiences where WeChat just went crazy with that kind of thing yep. they've done. And what is the positioning and you know the advantages? <coughs> yeah, I, th I think that the key there are a lot of ways to integrate services into messaging apps. And 
Michael, can I ask another question here? How many people in this room are currently working on a messaging app? Interesting. Well, fewer than I thought. Um, but uh, you know, there are a lot of messaging apps out there, a lot of people are doing it. But you know, when you look at the details of how you do these integrations, what WeChat does versus what Facebook is working on versus what Google is talking about are all really different. And you know, we haven't gone in the direction of natural language and bots, like the Slack kind of direction. We're, much, we're more going toward very simple, streamlined, interactive GUIs, and we think it's a winner. Like, this is very, very comprehensible. So that's, you know, in terms of the type of integration, the type of experience, this is where we're going. I would love to, to see, you know, a year from now there are a thousand of these, right? But you've got to start with something. We're in beta right now, so you're seeing the very mainstream instances of um, cold bubbles here. All right, guys, that's all the time we have. Thank you.